in your mind is not just some simple trick that you do. It is actually the essence of what Christianity actually is. So we're gonna be going over four things that you need to do in order to give your mind to God. I definitely suggest you stay till the end because it will be very important, the very last one. I save the best to the last. It means chapter five, verse 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. First thing we're gonna to have to be discussing is giving thanks. Truly, when you start losing sight of what's going on in your life and you start thinking everything is, is out to get you or everything is just turning bad, it typically is because you're not giving thanks to God. It allows you to understand what's good in your life. A lot of the time when you get into this mode where you are just, you, you don't know where you wanna go or what you wanna do and nothing seems good in your life, it's because you're not seeing a lot of the things. Children, when they look around, everything is beautiful, everything's awe-inspiring. When you start giving thanks to God, number one, God loves it, it's said in the Bible that God loves it. And number two, you start getting to see everything around you that's good, everything that God is actually giving you. In other third world countries, some of them can't even find water. And sometimes your problem is just basically because your cable went out. You have a roof over your head, you have food in your fridge, you have so many different things that you can be thankful for and that you can appreciate of being good in your life. You have so much more than so many other people in different countries around the world. You get to wake up and have a fresh cup of joe in the morning while some people are waking up and having to avoid gunfire. First Chronicles 16 verse 34, Oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever and say, save us O God of our salvation, gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. We can't see the way that God sees. Have you ever taken a second and just kind of retrospected on something that you thought was going to be opportunistic or something that you thought was going to be something that would push you further in the future and it didn't work out and it, it's a, a great thing that it didn't work out. You give thanks for not just the things around you but the life circumstances. Perfect instance that I used to just get trashed at bars to the point that I couldn't see. And there's so many people that I have seen in the past that have gotten to huge car wrecks and have died because they drunk drove and, and did stupid things like I did. And by the grace of God and his mercy, I am still here. It's something that I kind of challenge you to do in your life. Start giving thanks for not just the things around you, but also the circumstances that you are still breathing, that you're still alive, that you still have good things around you and that you're in a much better spot than a lot of people. So James chapter one, verse two, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. You're probably not seeing a lesson that God is trying to teach you. The type of women that I was continually choosing in my life, God was trying to teach me a lesson continually showing to me that you keep going for the wrong person. God is trying to teach you something. God is trying to push you through something that you are not recognizing. Sometimes you're not looking at an actual situation that you keep banging your head against the wall and you're not learning what the problem is. Instead of recognizing that it's not the right choice to make, you keep choosing it and then blaming God for why it goes wrong. And this is what God tends to bring a lot of the time when you feel like you need to give your mind to God and it's not quiet is that it's a lesson that God is continually trying to to teach you. It's not the path for you. It's not the place that you need to be. And sometimes we don't see that because we want something so bad that we don't get to see that. There might be another way that we're missing. You know, of course, it might be more difficult. It might not be as easy as the pathway that you have been seeking or that you've been wanting to go through. But God is trying to teach you that you're not learning. The whole point of Christianity is to continue to learn. You don't stop growing at 20 or even 30. You're, you're growing every single day if you decide to. And sometimes Sometimes you're stuck because you're, you stop deciding to keep growing. What God is trying to teach you in this certain moment in time is that there's a lesson to be learned from something that you're doing and you keep missing it. Psalm 23, and it's a famous one. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Third thing that I want you to do is I want you to read David's story. When I first became a Christian, I had this mindset. I knew who David was, kind of, or thought I did. And I thought he was this 
majestic warrior that you know was super super for god and just completely never did anything wrong and it was just like this great mighty warrior of god and this is such a christ type moment teaching me when i read the story of david I, I was kind of flabbergasted because in all essence, David was kind of a scumbag. So I'm hearing all these things of David being this massive warrior and it was God's favorite and you know, the bloodline to Jesus. I had this whole picture in my head of him being this perfect person. And all I see is that dude just messed up over and over again. This is why David was God's favorite. Not because he was perfect, which a lot of us tend to want to do, but that he kept seeking God in the good and in the bad and mostly in the bad times. What you'll read with a lot of the Psalms is David constantly learning to give thanks and seeking the Lord when things are going wrong. When you read the story of David, basically everybody was trying to kill him. The, the king was trying to kill him. His friend was trying to kill him. His son was trying to kill him. Guy had everybody trying to kill him. The one thing that he kept doing is he just went to a secret place and talked to God. You need to read the story of David so that you understand. We tend to think that when we're with God, life is just supposed to be perfect quick intermission if you're liking this video do me that favor hit the like hit that subscribe I tend to think that it's just supposed to be perfect every single day when you read the story of david not only do you see that he was a complete screw up <laughs> even in the bad times even though he had a extremely hard life he still went to god he just wanted to make sure that he was with god and that's what made him the favorite at the end of all of it when i read the whole story of what david did in the life what god wants to show you he doesn't want a person that's perfect that's what the Pharisees technically were. They were trying to be perfect people. David was so great and it's so funny that the Pharisees never saw it. It's because he wasn't perfect, but the one thing that he did do is kept seeking God. That's kind of the situation for your life. When you read his story, it's something that you need to do and understand your life is not going to be roses and cupcakes all the time because we live in a fallen world. And understand that even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though your life is getting tough and things are getting loud and things are heating up, even though all of this is happening, you know God's with you. If you keep believing in him, if you keep praying and you keep keeping to the commandments that he said, God will never leave you. David did a lot of horrible things. Unlike Saul, Nebuchadnezzar, Judah, this. The problem with those guys is that they then believed in themselves and tried to find a different God that would support whatever they were doing. Instead of what David did, instead of trying to pridefully support his cause, he went to God and let God punish him. Also let God love him and, and keep him in his arm. Even if you mess up, God's not leaving you. The only way that God leaves you is if you leave him. So if you don't leave him, he'll never leave you. Isaiah 43, 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What's so important about that verse in Isaiah? It's something that I think a lot of us end up doing. The reason why you can't give your mind to God is because you're stagnant. You're not moving anywhere. You're kind of stuck in what you're doing. And what that verse kind of represents is that you're going to hold on to the past if you're not moving forward. I think we confuse being in God's presence for being lazy and being stagnant, being not movable, you know, staying in where you are. And what you need to do and how you can give your mind to God is by moving forward, taking steps towards something. That's kind of how you forget or you give the past to God. If you are not moving forward in life, your mind is going to overflow with the past and everything that's going to happen. You keep moving forward. You don't fear what the future holds. You don't fear any of that because you know that God is with you. This is going to go whatever way God wants it to. Whatever way God wants this next event to happen is going to happen. And I'm just going to keep taking steps forward. And a lot of the time, what you don't do is you don't trust God. I tell you what, most of my life, a lot of the times I've jumped in, even without God, God still had me the whole way. You know, it didn't matter where I went or whatever it was. God always had my back, no matter what I did. God doesn't want you to stop. God wants you to embrace his presence and move forward. The enemy is going to get in your brain and start telling you that things aren't going to work out, that things aren't going to move forward. And what you forget is the promise of God. And when Joshua was talking to everyone in the promised land, telling them you can either choose your gods or you choose the Lord God of your people. Every promise that he has in your life, he's going to fulfill it. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to just change your life rapidly. It's going to grow you into the type of person that you are, but your promise will be fulfilled in God as long as you move forward and give all of this to him. 
Smells like hard work and determination, boys. Hit that like and subscribe if you like this video. Comment down below your favorite verse. I'd love to hear which one you guys relate to the most. That would be really cool to see you guys say these in the comments. But as always, guys, praise God, love God. He's great all the time. Love you all. Peace.